Hey guys, Andrew McFarland here from StartAJuiceBar.com. Hope you guys are feeling amazing, happy, healthy, and inspired to start your juice bar businesses. Today we're talking about starting a juice bar or smoothie bar in a limited space, a small space. Some of you out there may be starting inside of a gym, yoga studio, uh, could just be a small kiosk. And I'm going to talk about some of the implications and principles when it comes to considering starting a juice or smoothie bar in this environment. Uh, but before I do, if you guys are new to the channel and you don't know who I am and you don't know what we do for over the past 10 years, myself and our company has had the pleasure of running our own juice bar concepts as well as supporting many people like yourself all over the world, launch juice bars, smoothie bars, acai bowl concepts, and the like. So before, lastly, before we dive into today's topic of conversation, now's an invitation to press the like button because this is obviously gonna expose this content to other people around the world. That way we can all support one another in making the world a healthier place. So without further ado, let's dive in. Maybe you're in a situation where you either own a juice bar or I should say you own a gym and you're trying to put a juice bar inside of it or maybe you own a yoga studio or maybe you're talking to other places or you found a lease and it's a great location I was talking to a prospective client today about a space that they found and it's in a really, really, really high traffic area, but the space is tiny. And when I say tiny, I mean, you know, on average, and this is going to depend on where you are if you're in a city or a suburb, but on average, most of the time, a juice bar, smoothie bar is going to be somewhere between six and, you know, 700 square feet on the low end to, you know, 1500 square feet on the high end. And these are the averages. doesn't mean that you can't have a smoothie or juice bar that's 2,000 square feet or you can't have one that's smaller. And today we're gonna to talk about that. When you find a place that might be less than 600 square feet, and if you guys use square meters, then just do the conversion. But when you find a tinier space that has restrictions on how you produce, how much storage you have, what are some of the principles that you need to know, and then what are some of the strategies that you can implement to still take advantage of this situation and location but not be too restricted to that point where it actually starts to become a detriment to your business. So the first thing that I wanna say is that, as I mentioned in other videos, you have wholesale minimums. That means that when you order apples, it's gonna come 40 pounds at a time. When you order bananas, oranges, these might come 20 to 40 pounds at a time. This is gonna take up space, not to mention your, uh, what we call paper products, which cups, spoons, right? Forks, napkins, you know, cleaning utensils, all of this stuff takes up space and you have to figure out a way to efficiently utilize the space to get the most out of that. Because if you, for example, don't create a menu or a production space that is thoughtfully designed, you're going to hit a ceiling, meaning your sales might have a threshold where you can't produce more than $1,500 a day or $2,000 a day, depending on what your limitation is, when really, if the space is designed well and your menu is designed well, you might have an opportunity to double that, that amount. Maybe you could make $3,000 a day or $4,000 a day because you're not running out of product, the space is uh, being utilized well, the production is efficient, and so on. Sometimes people have the misconception that actually building a juice bar or smoothie bar concept or acai bowl concept in a smaller space is easier. But the truth is, is actually it's harder because I oftentimes use this analogy that if you see the size of a computer today versus the size of what a computer was even, you know, 30 years ago, it's exponentially smaller. Now we've got phones that have the same sort of processing power as computers or actually I should say more than computers historically. And it took a long time for us to evolve to the place where we could do more with a smaller device. And the same thing goes for designing anything physical. When you have to have something that's smaller, do more, it requires that much more attention to detail. It demands that you are meticulous with your approach. Uh, whereas a bigger space can afford to make mistakes and then move things in, move things out. If you have a very, very small space, and this also applies to people who have juicer smoothie trucks are thinking about getting into that. This applies to you as well. You have to be very, very thoughtful with the design of the space and your menu. So let's talk about some of these principles. Naturally, because you have a limitation in the space and therefore a limitation to the amount of inventory that you can hold, 
you're going to want to make sure that your menu offerings are distilled. And I can't tell you what the exact number is per category because I don't know how big the space is that you're working with, but simpler, the better. The simpler, the better, right? Especially when it comes to juice in particular, because juice takes up more space than any product in this industry. Because when you're making a salad, you have ingredients that go from here to there, you just rearrange them and that's what the salad is. When you're making a smoothie, you throw ingredients in a blender and you blend those up. When you're making a juice, you're extracting the fiber. So what this means is in order for you to create a 12 ounce or 16 ounce juice, you need that much more product spatially inside of your physical location. And so the input and the output, you get much less output and it takes more input, more product, which requires more space. And so keep your juice recipes and your juice portion of your menu at a minimum and also your inventory because there's one thing, let's say for example, you can have three juices that all have three ingredients that are all fresh. So in total, that's nine ingredients. But what if you sell, you have three juices that all have five ingredients, right? That's 15 and the list goes on and on. So it's not just a matter about how many products you have. It's really about a matter of how many items in your inventory you have that you have to be aware of when it comes to any business, but especially aware of when you have a smaller space and you're planning on making juice. The same thing goes for your equipment, right? Processing. How much equipment do you need? How much equipment can you reasonably have in that small space? And how are you prioritizing your equipment based on your core offerings? Okay? So this is the thing that you really want to think about. And, and sim I cannot say this enough. Simplicity is key. Simplicity is key. Now, what's the strategy that you can actually utilize? As I alluded to early on, refrigeration space is in any business, big or small, right? Small space or large space. Refrigeration space is sort of prime restaurant and food service business real estate because it's really easy to expand with your dry ingredients if you need to. And this is a strategy we've utilized before. You can get offsite storage, right? You can have your dry ingredients in a storage unit somewhere that's offsite. It doesn't have to be temperature, temperature controlled because it's not going to go bad. You just got to make sure that it's sealed appropriately and maintained. And this also goes for things like your cups and your spoons. Keep them in the box and you can put them in a, in a, in a storage unit. But when it comes to things like you know, frozen ingredients and fresh ingredients, you only have so much refrigeration that you're going to have. And it's very hard to upgrade this because of what it means for the electrical, what it means for the rearrangement of your space. It's a big deal. So this is a strategy you can utilize and also just be particular about what ingredients you have fresh, what ingredients you have frozen, and also what fresh ingredients you have that don't need to be refrigerated. Because this is another thing when you create a menu, not everything that's a fruit or vegetable has to go in a fridge. Right? When you go to a grocery store, you don't buy oranges in a fridge. You don't buy apples in a fridge. They don't need to be refrigerated. So you can design your menu in such a way that it's also taking into consideration the limitation that you have of space, refrigerator, refrigerated space and frozen space. And how do you also consider how much stuff you can keep on a countertop, bananas that don't need to be refrigerated, um, so many other things that will give you the opportunity to leverage using fresh items, but not have to take too much of your refrigerated space. The last thing I want to say, which is really just an emphasis of the point that I've making, been making throughout this entire video, is the importance of organizing the space efficiently. Because if you have too many things going on, it requires too many people to also be in, in a space. It can be hectic when you've got too many functions where a juice is getting made, and then a salad is getting made, and then a smoothie is getting made, but you need three people to be in a space that's only five feet by three feet, right? If you're in a food truck, you know, yeah, maybe it's maybe, you know, in the interior of that food truck, maybe 10 feet by three feet, give or take, and it can get crowded, it can get busy, it can get chaotic, it can get messy. And so the more you distill your operations as well and simplify your menu and simplify everything, the more you can allow for fewer people to manage a higher volume because the processes and the space that they need to move in between is a lot more, um, it, it's more flexible in its utilization because it doesn't require all this complexity. I hope this helps, um, and I hope it helps you guys realize how important it is to really think through all of these elements. If you guys do need support with even designing your location or any other part of your business, we have a full-scale development agency. We help our clients with everything from A to Z, so feel free to reach out to me at andrew at starterjuicebar.com. If you guys haven't liked the video yet, you definitely want to do that. Press the like button. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you know where that goes in the comment box below. If you want to just tell me you like the content, I always love hearing from you guys and seeing who's in the community and just knowing that we're building and working on all of this together because some of you 
I'm sure know that our mission is to create a world where there are more juice bars, smoothie bars, healthy cafe options than there are fast food restaurants because there's no reason that there should be more McDonald's in the world and more places that are not supporting humanity get healthy than there are healthy food service concepts. So we can all create this world together. If you guys aren't listening to our podcast, I invite you to do that. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes at The Juice Bar Experts. We also release episodes on our website at StarterJuiceBar.com. We also have blogs there. And if you're not following us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram at StarterJuiceBar. You can also direct message me there. And that's it for now. Until next time, hope you guys are doing well. See you guys at the next video. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of the content. If you're in a place where you are really inspired to start your juice business, but you're not exactly sure what the next steps are. For you, we've created a free ebook, The 15 Steps to Starting Your Juice Business from Scratch. This is gonna give you an overview of everything that you need to do from just having a concept all the way to launching your business. Beyond that, if you're inspired to go even deeper, we've created an online course, The Juice Bar Master Blueprint, that is going to go into great detail into every single area of launching a successful juice business. There's links for both of these in the description below. I know you'll find a lot of value out of them. As always, wishing you guys a lot of success and I'll see you at the next video.